Yo, Blue Falcon fans, we got the ultimate buddy fucker deck, the best rogue deck in the format, aka the Master Duel, Inferno Tempest, deck you out, we'll pick your poison deck. Topped two locals with this saucy boy, the homie over here, John, one of the OG Falcons. And yeah, tell us about the deck, John. So it's Hippo Best Deck. And it's the only name you can possibly name this deck. And um, I decked out, I don't know, like, easily each local's probably seven people or seven games in each local's. I went X1 for second place uh, last Wednesday, and then X1 for third place last Friday with it. Uh, Five-man local's or... Five round locals each uh, night with like, I don't know, 20, 25 people that showed up. Yeah, that's and, uh, disgusting. It's basically just you win with Inferno Tempest. Yeah, so we're basically calling this the first installment of Trash Can or Trash Can't because let's face it, this is a big doo doo butt deck. But it's terrible. It 100% plays into meta. Into tier, plays into whatever you want it to play into, and it does well. We're going to the profile, yes. and it's just it's just all classic sauce with some kaijus and just great just some great times. We got three battle fader because in the battle phase, Inferno attempt to shit. Big kaijus, other big kaijus. Three necro face, the best card in the deck, the MVP, the hippo, and then. Nyan Nyan. You play Nyan Nyan to, to make sure you get one more Necroface, right? The fourth Necroface proc? Well, so it really depends. Um, the Nyan Nyan there is there for a fourth Necroface if you need it, but after you hit him with Inferno Tempest, uh, because first of all, every deck is playing a 3k monster, and if they're not playing a 3k monster, your Kaiju is going to give them a 3k monster. Yep. Uh, so you're, you're resolving Inferno Tempest like like, no tomorrow. Was there ever a um, game that you just couldn't resolve it? Uh, every time I went into Inferno Tempest or tried to resolve it, I did. Okay. Uh, minus one game. Uh, it was actually one of the games I lost. It was game three against, uh, I believe it was Danger Tier. It was, it was a tier variant. And the only reason I lost is because uh, in battle phase, I had two Inferno Tempest set. And he was able to um, mill eight and get the fusion with Pellerino or the field spell, whatever it's called. Um, and he was able to pop one and spin back one uh, during battle phase. So oh. he was able to win game. <laughs> Well, that's absolutely disrespectful. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, so I did lose that game against Tier, and that was the match. Okay. Yeah, that's rude as shit. But this you're also playing rude shit too. So I mean, I guess that was your karma for the locals. You ended up topping anyway, so I guess you really you got the pack. So it doesn't matter. Play one card destruction <laughs> because it is a mill out deck for one win con. Creature so card destruction, I would actually change out. What would you change um, it for? I would change it for a second uh, Scarecrow. Okay. Yeah, in that battle uh, phase? Yeah, to have a, like a fifth battle fader okay. in a sense. Uh, yeah. Because it, it's battle fader is literally disgusting right now. No one's prepared for a battle fader. <laughs> they get hit by it. It's hilarious because I would go first. Like if I won or lost the die roll. Um, they would make me go first, or I'd go first, or even if I lost game one, I'd go first. Yeah. Right? And um, I would pass without setting any cards. And it was just hilarious, because they would think I'd brick. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> they would just, like, not set up Omni Negates. Like, you're, it's a head game with this deck. So uh, it's just funny, because they'll just put enough on board to, like, swing game. And then... You, they get hit with a battle fader, and they're like, what? And I'm like, GG. Uh, <laughs> next game, uh, you switch your battle fader to attack position, you give them a kaiju, 
and then just attack your kaiju, Inferno Tempest. All right, now you're at deck out, right? Because you're, you're playing, what, 26 spells? 25 spells. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you're going to have more cards in your deck than them. And then you just have the tokens um, generators with all your cards where you can just defend off whatever board they have. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I think definitely uh, another way to end the battle phase would be super phenomenal. Future, try it out next, you know, after we're not in the competitive season, you know, preparing for YCS Pasadena and, you know, online regionals. But we got that one change of heart because it is the best one up in the game. And then, let's see. Three Hippo Carnival, you know, the boss, like, OTK combo of the deck right here between this Super Hippo and Leeching Light. How often did you yeah, OTK that, with the Leeching Light combo? Because the original Master act- Duel thing that I saw before the whole um, Necroface combo was actually just Hippo, Leeching Light, Kaiju. And mm-hmm. I thought that was great, so I had to hop in there and troll my way to Platinum with that shit. But uh, how often did you hit people at Locals with Leeching Light? So they thought my only win con was Inferno Tempest. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> uh, I would act like I'm going into Inferno Tempest combo, and then I would just summon all my tokens and attack with like uh, any hippo card, yeah. right? And then give them a kaiju. You get rid of the problem monster with your kaiju, obviously. Um, Does it happen? And then. I hope so, bro. Because I was actually playing legit hippo tokens and legit scapegoat tokens. It has a scapegoat, but doesn't have the hippo tokens. You know, it is a big sad day when we only got when we don't got hippo. They don't. Oh, there's one. Hey, orange token. That's what's up. Yeah, that's again. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, it's funny because they don't think you have a second win con, and then uh, you just kaiju slumber. Like, no one was on Ash for some reason. Or if they were on Ash, they never saw it. Yeah. So, Kaiju Slumber is just disgusting. Yeah, it's a great card. Board Wipe gives a monster, just literally fuels your free Inferno Tempest play. And then you token after Kaiju Slumber. And then Leeching Light. Now you have a 6,600 Kaiju on your field, along with four tokens, or a Hippo, yeah. 42. And then a... um. Three other tokens at thirty-three yeah. for an easy OTK. Yep, and we're, we're we're also playing the one under seal because you know we are playing the kaiju package. We're turning on the hand, super free, um, free extrap, no explanation there. One up start, no explanation. This is basically a thirty-nine card deck. Um, we already went over the hippo token OTK aspect. Now the scapegoat package is literally just access code turbo. One scapegoat is access code, so. No explanation there. We all know the combos with that. We'll go into yeah. the best extra deck you're going to see for any road deck. It is budget, minus the access code talkers, but you're good to go. We got two Link Rebos, the Nightmare Package. We're playing two different of the Link 2s. You know, get rid of either Spell Traps, Monsters, two Unicorns, two Access Codes. Self-explanatory, you know, we want to be able to have that option with the Extrav. Playing one goddess because we want to out the towers. We don't hit our we don't draw the kaiju. And then a standard Zeus package: one to attack directly and one to swing into a monster. Double downers, double Zeus. Uh, now with a sideboard, y'all may have some questions. Be like, why the sphere mode? You know, we're, it's a deck. It's a game. It's a format where we build wide boards, right? Mm-hmm. And if you want to inferno tempest someone and you can't you can't or you want to be a OTK you know what sphere mode being a good option so how often did you actually resolve sphere mode nib or lava golem so lava golem and nib i resolved actually a few times uh every time i sided the sphere mode i never saw it so i could have resolved it if i saw it but uh that's just because i played against like a sprite player um yeah. that went wide i played against a valiant player that went wide uh madolce kind of went wide um like the late game the branded predator plant player i played 
yeah. went wide. You know, like all these decks are going wide to think that they could just swing a game on me. And then <laughs> or my tokens, because like once you resolve a hippo uh, carnival or super hippo carnival, they have to attack the tokens first before your monsters. That's so, great. But yeah, that's like also very good uh, aspect of the tokens. And then we're getting so, the Ojama trios, you know, is this just to help facilitate that Lava Golem play? Yeah, okay. exactly. Uh, and then the, I mean, the Ojama trio, I really didn't go into a lot. Uh, I didn't even really cite it. It's just there because it's troll card. It is troll and, card. So this is your this is your three card flex piece right here. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, those three could be whatever you want it to be. Um, and then Nib was also hilarious too because no one was expecting a Nib. Yeah, give him give him that million attack Nib token in front of Tempest. It's all you need. And then um, <laughs> we have the Curse Seal of Forbidden Spell. You see, this is a mostly spell based deck. No problem being able to discard a spell in the gate, and they can no longer use that spell for the rest of the duel. It is disgusting. It was a great card in the Shadal format. It's a great card now in this format when you got Sprite Starter. You got the Tier Element sp uh, Field Spell card. You got Branded playing their Branded shit. So you got options to hit with this Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell. Super great deck. Y'all should check it out. Like I said, super budget minus the access codes. It's everything else. You can probably, what, like 30 bucks for the whole deck? <laughs> I think I paid more for like shipping than the actual deck. Yeah. Like to be honest. Like you probably paid like, around two dollars for shipping for those god gosh darn uh hippo carnivals. They're like a oh, one yeah. cent card, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it was <laughs> awful. You have a local store with a bunch of bulk, go through that bulk and you oh, have yeah. a great deck. If we get, it's just hilarious because the deck actually performed well and I did not expect it. But I did go into access code like three times. Um, uh, because I tried to deck them out and they still had like 10 cards in deck. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well now I'm just going to go into access code line. And then when, and like that way, you know? Oh yeah. You got to be able to be versatile with it. It is a helmet deck, but you got to big brain your plays and play it right. Because if not, you're going to give a free win. But yeah, you know, you the basic, you have to bait out gates. So. As long as your main win con is internal, uh, Inferno Tempest, and when you resolve that, it just feels so good. It's, it literally decks out people better than Runic. <laughs> better than Runic? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Runic is yeah. the second. Runic is the second best deck out variant. This is the best. Um, all right, that that be the it, the end of our list. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. If we can get you know a hundred likes on this, we'll do a combo video on EDO Pro or any of the other dueling sims just kind of showcase the salt that people have for having everything banished so y'all don't forget you're not bad you just need to shuffle better y'all have a good rest of your week